This weekend at Utah's Sundance Film Festival, a premier showcase for independent films, the movie world will be discovering a very special documentary called Hoop Dreams, which follows two inner-city Chicago youngsters on their quest for basketball stardom, a most ambitious project. The Hoop Dreams production team follows the boys for five years, from their freshman year in high school through their freshman year in college. And what a story we get. Here we first meet young William Gates as he is sent off from his home in the projects to a mostly white middle-class suburban Catholic high school that specializes in recruiting black basketball stars. He asked me, do I want to be a great player? And I keep saying, yeah. He said, for four years, I'm going to be on you every day. So he said, you might as well get used to it now. Elsewhere in town, young Arthur Agee also attends St. Joseph's, but when his parents can't come up with his partial tuition money for the school, he ends up playing for his neighborhood high school team. If he was going out there and he was playing like they had predicted him to play, he wouldn't be at Marshall. Economics wouldn't have had anything to do with him not being at St. Joseph's. Somebody would have made some kind of arrangement and the kid would have still been there. He's not making it like they thought he was going to make it on the basketball court, so he's not there. Simple as that. Hoop Dreams runs nearly three hours, and the extra running time lets us follow the rising and falling fortunes of these athletes, like when William Gates suffers a knee injury and is tested by two crucial free throws in a junior year playoff game. Then Arthur Agee does make it to the state finals, but he's unable because of bad grades to get into a four-year college. If I, if I said my man, I, I, can, I can go. I can, I can go. Get in good college, I can go. But if I don't, you know, I ain't going to be no drug dealer, you know, cry about it, come back and, you know, stick up gas stations or nothing like that, you know probably going to comedian or architecture or something like that. I'll tell you how good Hoop Dreams is. I couldn't wait until the end of the picture to see what ultimately happens to these kids. We learned that in a series of titles flashed across the screen, but I'm hoping for updates as their lives progress. In a few years, I'd like to see another documentary on them, a documentary on chasing the NBA dream and the often harsh realities along the way. Hoop Dreams will play this week and next at the Sundance Film Festival. I'm sure it's going to be received well there. So let me add my congratulations to those that are going to be earned by director Steve James and photographer Peter Gilbert. They have made a special film. Boy, they sure have. This is one of the best films about American life that I have ever seen. And I was, for three hours, I was just totally absorbed by the story of these two families, really. It's not just yes, the kids, but their families. And you know, we get so many images in the movies of black inner city characters with guns and drugs and gangs. Here are families that are struggling to make it. You don't hear all the four-letter words or the 12-letter words. You see dinner on the table at night. You see kids getting up before dawn in order to take an hour and a half right. commute to go to school. You see them trying to study and then at the same time you see the way their basketball skills are really manipulated even at the high school level before they ever get to college by people who want to make use of those skills. Right. It's a movie that just raises so many questions and has so many insights. Uh, and on the movie level, these are two characters. I think no, there are people who, when they hear documentary, they think they back off. You're going to find these guys yeah. more interesting and fully mm -hmm. written in the ways that we're always knocking mm -hmm. pictures for being underwritten. Here are two exciting characters. Let me just suggest one thing to you. We talked about the air up there, and we said, well, kids will like it. Yeah. I think kids would like this, too, really oh. like it, because this is a real-life story about kids Oh, I think age. they will, too. And I'll tell you, when this kid is shooting his free throws, mm -hmm. Jeez. These, we know wow. who's shooting them. Yeah. And that's terrific. Coming up next. Now it's time for our choices for the number one spot, the best film of 1994. And at the top of my list is Hoop Dreams. This is the brilliant and completely absorbing documentary about crucial years in the lives of two Chicago youngsters named William Gates and Arthur Agee, who dream of someday being pro basketball stars. It isn't often a movie takes the time or has the patience to allow us to grow up with its characters, but the texture of real life is right there on the screen in Hoop Dreams as we see these two kids recruited off the inner city playgrounds and given scholarships to a suburban school with a famous basketball program. The point is often made in the movie that Isaiah Thomas also started in the inner city and also attended this same school before going on to stardom. Then he goes to St. Joseph High School. Well, Roger, this is also my choice as the best film of 1994. It's the best picture that I saw. It has the greatest reach of any film. 
it, uh, when you, this is an eight-year project by these three filmmakers. If, I've heard people say, oh, it's three hours. Well, these guys can spend eight years out of their lives. Mm -hmm. Can you think you can spend an hour more than you spent on, let's say, seeing Richie Rich? I think you can handle that. I think audiences <laughs> can handle that. Um, the story's completely surprising. A basketball shot's a free throw, one of the most boring things in all of basketball, takes on an importance here in just the way yes. you're talking about, where you're thinking about not just the score of the game, but what that shot will mean to the kids to an and their life. families. Yes, yes. And their families. This movie has twists and turns in it yeah. that you wouldn't believe in a fiction film. It keeps you absolutely on the edge of your seat. You're scene. right. You're living with these families, and they're, they're great families. Having said that, now let's take a look at my number two pick, which is Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. Continuing our memo to the Academy, now we want to instruct voters how to mark their nominating ballots in the best picture <laughs> category. And there are two films that I think are very likely to be nominated, two good films, Forrest Gump and Quiz Show. Beyond that, it's anybody's guess. But my dream for a best picture nomination is Hoop Dreams, the amazing basketball documentary, three hours long, that is about so much more than basketball. Hoop Dreams follows two inner city kids for five years from eighth grade through their freshman year in college as they try to become professional basketball players. And I haven't even scratched the surface in telling you their stories. You couldn't predict at any point how this picture was going to turn out. The filmmakers, Peter Gilbert, Fred Marks, and Stephen James, got total access to the lives of the A.G. and Gates families, and their access becomes ours. The result is something so rare in American movies, an intimate portrait of lower-income lives, which in terms of hopes and dreams for their children are, on one level, no different than anyone else's, but in other ways, in some practical ways, our worlds apart. The biggest celebration, for example, in Hoop Dreams is not a basketball victory, but of one of the boys reaching his 18th birthday. Boy, does that hit home. Many of his friends do not reach 18. Hoop Dreams is one of the five best pictures of the year. It deserves to be nominated as such. I am 100% with you about this. You know, the category doesn't say best fiction film. Mm -hmm. It says best picture. Right. Hoop Dreams is a picture, and it is one of the best pictures of the year. Sure it is. And I just hope that the Academy is able to get out of its orientation around fiction films long enough to just look at this movie and to say, this year, our industry, which we take so much pride in, has done an extraordinary thing in producing this movie, Hoop Dreams, mm -hmm. and we want to honor it because there are not five better movies in yeah. the whole world that we can put above well, also, it on our list. Listen, I know there are people out there that are fans of this picture, but I would say to them is, don't think that the documentary branch is going to take care of it with an award, because no. the documentary branch has historically proven to be the, one of the most unreliable. They tend to resent films that achieve notoriety, documentaries that want to protect even smaller films. So if you're going to do something for Hoop Dreams, do it in the lead category, because it may not be even nominated in the documentary I agree with category. you on that, and everybody can vote for Best Picture, whereas the other categories right. are more specialized. Go and for you're it. right about the documentary branch being okay. totally out to lunch. Moving on now to surprises of omission on the Oscar list, we were both shocked to find out that Hoop Dreams, the Chicago basketball documentary of inner city black lives, was shut out of the best documentary category, not to mention best picture. It did receive a best editing nomination, but the documentary committee continued its shocking streak of ignoring films that are praised by critics, or maybe more important, receive plenty of exhibition in commercial theaters and are endorsed by the public. The 47 members of the documentary committee seems to be saying we'd rather help other films achieve the same kind of prominence. This time they ignored a movie that followed two Chicago boys for five years from eighth grade to their freshman year in college as they follow their dream of playing NBA professional basketball. Derek Zinman's layup pushes Marshall to a one-point lead. Moments later, a Westinghouse foul, and then a double technical puts Arthur on the line with a chance to ice the victory. I talked with two documentary committee members. One gave Hoop Dreams the highest rating possible. The other said he heard that some of his fellow members had trouble with its three-hour running time. If true, it should be noted that the film editors nominated Hoop Dreams for best editing of any movie all year. So it wasn't too long for editors, which may be the ultimate compliment, if you think about it, for a three-hour movie. 
the best thing to come out of the snubbing is that the media is going to spend more time now promoting Hoop Dreams, which opened wider last week. It's now in more than 250 theaters across the country. You take a look. You'll be glad you, you did. You know, Gene, I was talking to Barbara Koppel, who won two Academy Awards a for great her documentary documentaries. great documentary filmmaker. And she said this committee is in love with talking heads and stock footage, and that's exactly what they are. These old-fashioned, television-oriented films with battleships bombing the beaches of Normandy while some deep voice says how many troops went ashore. They are not interested in living, breathing documentaries. And there's another problem, and that is... The committee that picks these documentaries is volunteers, mostly retired people, not most of them documentarians at all. But they have four hours free, two nights a week for 11 weeks, to see 64 documentaries, almost 100 hours of documentaries. And so they go night after night, and they get to know each other, and they chat, and they arrive, and they leave. And until this year, they had a chairman. This year, the woman who was the chairman stepped aside for a year because she had a film that was in the running. Now, what do you know? They nominated it. It's the Stockholm Syndrome. They're so friendly that, of course, they wanted to do her a favor. And every year, if you go back year after year and look at the nominees, you'll find one or two nominees that are fishy because the people that manipulate the committee are trying to get their pictures nominated. This situation stinks. It's rotten. And until the Academy reforms it, they have shame on their name. But, Roger, let me just throw some of their objections back because I know that they're going to okay. be listening and taking notes yeah. on everything they said. Number one, they're going to say... Uh, uh, that every branch gets to vote for its own work. Yeah, but this branch doesn't. The documentarians don't have a documentar documentary branch. Okay. And the next thing they're going to say is, you, Roger, and Eugene have not seen the 64 films well, we voted I've on. Well, I've seen one of them that they nominated, and nobody smart enough to tie his shoes would feel that that film was better than Hoop Dream. And that was a pretty good film, and by the way. it was a pretty good film. It's predictable. They resent success. When we come back, we'll take another look at the... What was the number one film of 1994? Was it Forrest Gump? Was it Pulp Fiction? Well, not according to a national survey of hundreds of film critics who ranked those films high, but one film higher. Hoop Dreams made more top ten lists than any other film last year, and it was number one on both of our lists. Mm -hmm. And now, the documentary about two inner-city Chicago kids and their hopes of eventual NBA stardom is out on home video, and it's my video pick of the week. Sophomore year, I was just carefree. If it could be done, I was going to do it. When Hoop Dreams failed to even get nominated for an Oscar in the documentary category last spring, there was a national outcry, a big controversy. But the documentary committee argued they'd simply seen five better films. Well, hardly anyone bought that. We saw the same five films and we didn't buy it. But not until this week were there concrete indications that the nominating process was unfair. In a meticulously researched article, Entertainment Weekly writer Alan Adelson reports that some committee members, after warning that Hoop Dreams would win if it was nominated, deliberately gave the movie their lowest possible scores to force it off the ballot altogether. Since the Hoop Dreams fiasco, the Motion Picture Academy has announced reforms of the documentary procedure, but this magazine article raises the question of whether this year's documentary nominations and results should be disqualified and the race run again on a level playing field. That might not be a bad idea. Now let's take another look at the movies we were...